Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the Kellogg-Briand Pact. From 1914 to 1918, Europe was torn by the First World War, the largest, most destructive conflict in history to that time. The scope and scale of the Great War was unprecedented and shocking. By the time the guns on the Western Front finally fell silent on November 11, 1918, many were convinced that humanity could not survive another such calamitous struggle. In December of 1918, peacemakers and diplomats began arriving in Paris to craft a treaty that would officially end the World War. In the spring of 1919, a peace treaty was signed in the Hall of Mirrors at the Palace at Versailles. Though deeply flawed, the Versailles Treaty did officially end the war. In the immediate aftermath of the Great War and the Versailles Treaty, an international peace movement began to emerge as diplomats and national leaders attempted to create mechanisms and relationships that would prevent global war. By the terms of the treaty, a League of Nations was created as a body in which international disputes could be mediated. In a similar vein, between 1921 and 1930, several naval arms limitation conferences were held, ostensibly to prevent global naval arms races. Perhaps the most ambitious and optimistic post-war attempt to secure peace was the Kellogg-Briand Pact of 1928. In April 1927, the French Foreign Minister, Aristide Briand, proposed a bilateral peace pact between France and the U.S. Secretary of State Frank B. Kellogg suggested that the pact be instead a multilateral treaty, an idea readily agreed to by Briand. By the spring of 1928, other nations had joined the U.S. and France in crafting the pact. The goal of the agreement, as stated in its preamble, was uniting the civilized nations of the world in a common renunciation of war as an instrument of their national policy. Essentially, the Kellogg-Briand Pact was an international agreement to outlaw aggressive war and to settle any international disputes through diplomacy. Significantly, however, the pact lacked any means of enforcement. On August 27, 1928, representatives from 15 nations signed the Kellogg-Briand Pact. Within 14 months, 47 other nations had signed the agreement. For many signatory nations, the pact was a political win-win. If peace prevailed, everybody benefited. But if war broke out, there would be no real consequences. For his efforts in creating and promoting the peace pact, Frank Kellogg was awarded the 1929 Nobel Peace Prize. Yet the inherent weakness of the agreement soon became apparent. That flaw was exposed in 1931 when Japan, a signatory of the pact, invaded Manchuria in northern China. Despite condemnation at the League of Nations, the international community did little to stop Japanese aggression. Over the course of the 1930s, other nations, such as Italy and Germany, violated the agreement at little cost. In the end, the Kellogg-Briand Pact was an imperfect agreement, noble in its idealism but deficient in its practicality. The desire to eliminate war was, and is, a grand humanitarian vision, but the ability to enforce peace was lacking. Despite its shortcomings, the Kellogg-Briand Pact did have a lasting legacy in its promotion of non-violent dispute resolution, an idea adopted by the United Nations after the Second World War. And, somewhat amazingly, the Kellogg-Briand Pact is still technically in effect today. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.